guys, how you doing? It's Henry and Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's like 36 degrees today, very cold. <laughs> I feel like uh, slippers. Well, if you get it going, Terrell, I'll buy you a beef sandwich for lunch. <laughs> Anyways, you know from previous episodes, I found this Honda GCV 190 pressure washer two doors down, my neighbors. Uh, you pull it and it's free! 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 No compression. Almost like the connecting rod's not even connected. There is a little bit of resistance, so could be just no compression, right? Or it could be that the connecting rod is broken, but I feel that it would be a lot easier to pull if the connecting rod was broken. But we did stick a screwdriver into the spark plug hole and the piston wasn't moving. And then some subscriber told me that, well, there's a timing belt on there, right? But still, uh, when you pull the flywheel, it should still turn the crank and the piston and it should move. Timing belt just has to do with the timing. So I, I think that, you know, if I remove that engine and kind of swirled it around like up and down and see if you hear any broken pieces shuffling around in there, uh, then you know that the connecting rod is broken. Uh, this one I got from Bill Martini uh, from Motherload 36, I believe. And uh, this is this this is just missing the flywheel. There's no flywheel in here, but it does have the carburetor as well as the air cleaner and the air cleaner cover and all that stuff. And then while I thought this was a pressure washer, right? It is mounted on a pressure washer stand. But if you look over here on the side of this engine, it actually has the bail handle cables, uh, the bail handle mechanism, you know, for the flywheel brake. So this was attached to some kind of control cable to the bail handle. So this is actually a lawnmower engine on a pressure washer stand. It actually says here on the sticker, 21 inch push mower from Troy built, mulch side discharge rear bag. So this is actually what I need because this is a lawnmower engine and I need a lawnmower engine for a couple of decks that I have you know, in preparation for next spring. So I kind of have the inclination of, in the beginning I was thinking, let's make one good pressure washer engine out of the two, right? But here, I actually have a lawnmower engine that I need. So I would probably try to take that flywheel off of that one. I don't know if 190cc will fit on a 160cc engine. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of sure it will fit. So my inclination is to kind of sort of take that apart, kind of find out why that has no compression, and at the same time use that flywheel for this. In addition though, it's also missing, it has the linkage, but looks like this thing is disconnected from, from that thing, which believe it or not, makes a pretty big difference in how it runs. Um, it appears that it has the carburetor and everything is uh, intact. It just needs a bail handle cable, uh, a control cable to pull this, has no gas in it, and the oil is terrible. I mean, like, super black, you know, blacker than black, believe it or not. So I have to kind of figure out what I want to do first. Just take that flywheel off and put it on here and mess with this, or take that apart, see what's wrong with it, see that it's probably not able to be repaired because something's broke, you know, and then, then use the flywheel and put it on here. You know, I might have a flywheel for this. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's going to be today's episode. Because I've been putting off working on the snowmobile because it's so darn cold. I want to wait until it's at least 60, which <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. Giving you a better look at what I have here. Again, this is the GCV 160, I believe. Yeah. And if you look inside here, there's no flywheel and that appears to be the only thing missing from this so if I can get this one going I could use the engine for another mower as you can see the difference is this is the GCV 190 which is the 190 cc it's a little bit more I guess advanced where you have the mechanism here for on and off you have a separate choke handle here. 
and it's seized, see? Oh, okay. Fuel shut off, most Hondas have it, as this does. But like I said, to even test this, you need to like clamp these two together. To, you're releasing the brake from the flywheel. Gotta get a flywheel for this, and I think this one might. We can test this and see if it runs. But uh, I could always use the stands. I like the stands because they're good for engines. <laughs> to hold engines around. I got spare engines lying around. But this will be a good uh, engine stand. And also, this, this comes with uh, a cool, um, you know, selecting nozzle selector. That's kind of cool. I bet you this stuff still works. So I did a search in my eBay store and I do not have a flywheel being sold. I must have either sold it already or I don't know, would I have kept it in my bin because I thought I might need it someday? I don't think so. It's pretty easy to remove this. There's no gas in it. Uh, the old tank is attached to this top engine shroud. Pretty easy. Oh, look what else it's missing. What else is this missing, fellers? That's right. This is supposed to be connected to a ignition coil or armatron or magneto, which this does not have. As you can see the magneto looks like it's mounted on this post here and I guess this post here the mechanism for the control cable for the bail handle has a spring that brings it back this is the brake pad that touches the flywheel and look it has a mechanism here for engaging something Right, so when it's engaged, it says, okay, good to go. When you let go, it takes the spark away. This is attached to this wire here, see, that attaches to the magneto. And this is depressed. It says, okay, we're making a contact and you're getting spark to the spark plug. Or you're getting, you're letting go of the magneto. You're not grounding it. And then when you let go, you ground it. And then the magneto stops the spark, kills the engine. So that's how it works pretty cool uh, but this is you know electronic so it has a more likelihood of you know defect or shorting out or something I almost like the uh, actual grounding you know of a Briggs engine better but either way this needs a keyway and a flywheel uh, I mean this other than then needing a magneto we probably can just take the flywheel and magneto off of that one let's do that Hondas are very easy to work on, kind of like Kohler's. It's just the three 10 millimeter bolts that come off and top shroud. Ooh, Ooh there's gas in here. Uh, about a quarter way down. Hope it doesn't leak. That ought to be good. Not leaking. So here it is. It is, in fact, this post holding the left side down, this bolt holding this one down. As you can see, this is a good um, flywheel. No compression. Look, I can, I can easily turn it with my hands. Then, it, there, uh, then again, this is a pressure washer. Therefore, they, there is no brake to stop the flywheel from moving. You know what I mean? But we did test the spark plug hole and. In fact, there is no movement of the piston. So let me get a socket to get the crankshaft bolt off, and we'll try to pry this, uh, we'll try to take this magneto as well as this flywheel, see if it fits. Then we can test the uh, lawnmower one. I think I found about right the uh, crankshaft bolt works. It's not exactly the right size, but it works this cup off and the fan I 
I mean, let's just see. I mean, usually you want to put this nut back on and you whack it with a sledgehammer. But sometimes if you just take a crowbar and you, I mean, very rarely, but I'll try. And you see. You could break the uh, block if you pry it too hard. Oh, look, I didn't even have to whack it. Came right off. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. That flywheel came off without even whacking it. <laughs> That's great. Hmm, maybe I should go play the lottery today. No, I will only play Powerball when it's over a billion. Because other than that, it's not worth it. You can see this flywheel does not have any magnets nor a stator although it looks like you could put a stator on here and then put a uh, flywheel with a magnet on it so that it actually powers something you know and there's a key here it looks identical to that one identical <laughs> identical so woodruff key pop right out with my fingernail Let's take the magneto off too. I believe it's 10 mil. Putting it on, don't use an impact. Taking it off, it's okay. And if I had a deeper one, I can get that one, but I don't right now. Okay, now we got a magneto and a flywheel for that one. And I'll even use the existing bolts. Maybe not. Disconnect this from the same type of mechanism on that one. There we go. And there's a Honda magneto. It looks okay. There's no obvious signs of wear or deterioration. Uh, sometimes when a bad magneto you'll find that it's really rusty and these things are kind of splitting apart. This one looks good and it's good flywheel. So let's put that one together. So check this out. I put the Woodruff key in and it fit really well, but then I put the flywheel on and it doesn't look like it seats. Like it's supposed to go down more, but it doesn't because it's, I guess, much bigger. Also, if you look at this, right, the way the flywheel is shaped, well, this has a brake mechanism on it. So if this is spinning, right? What if you stop it right around there? It'll get caught there. It'll be like a sudden stop. And on this side here, look at this whole area there. That's a chunk. What if you stopped it right there? Boom, you would never be able to get that out again unless you disengage it again. I mean, it would be a sudden stop. It would jar it and break it, you know? So. It's apparent, not an uncle or an aunt, but your parent. <laughs> it's apparent that uh, this flywheel will not fit. So I looked on the internet and actually it is different completely. The GCV160 engines have a flywheel that's, you know, kind of like aluminum looking, you know, and also it's smooth 360 degrees around. It doesn't have this chunk gone you know so this is for power pressure washers you know because there is no brake to stop the flywheel from moving it i mean i don't know how that all works you know it doesn't just keep spinning and spinning i guess so but uh this cannot be used for this so that's a shame but i think the magneto would probably work but uh i don't have a flywheel for this and uh i guess i'll just wait for one or if you guys have one send it send it to me whatever so so i guess i will not be fixing this one today since i don't have a flywheel for it but i want to see if this magneto fits it i mean it's i it looks like the same i mean i just find it hard to believe that honda would make several different magnetos for their gcv engines gcv uh, 160s are the most common engines 
and uh, I would think that it all fits. And look, if the bolt pattern fits, it should work. Uh, you just need the right flywheel for it, that's all. So I'll put this back and uh, we'll wait for a flywheel someday. <laughs> and then we'll have an engine to work on. In the meantime, let's uh, put this on its back like this. And uh, we'll take the valve cover off just to check out uh, the timing chain. Now I'm not gonna take this completely apart. I just wanna ascertain uh, if the connecting rod is busted or not. I actually have an, a, a subscriber Gavin Cooper, I believe, he was interested in this engine for parts. 10 millimeter bolts to remove the valve cover. And so I'll remove this engine from the stand and send him the engine because he wants it. That is if I couldn't have got this going, which obviously I don't think I will. Well, we don't know yet. We want to see what's wrong. I don't think it has anything to do with the timing chain. I think the connecting rod is busted. That's what I think. I have to get a screwdriver to pry the silicone off of the valve cover gasket. go there's the valve cover off as you can see timing chain is right here as you can see the crankshaft does turn the camshaft the crankshaft turns the camshaft does turn the, the uh, gear for the timing gear uh, the timing chain uh, belt and it does move the um, valves, both sides. So I don't think it's the timing belt at all. It wouldn't prevent the piston from moving, right? Um, sometimes it does jump a tooth, meaning that it won't start because of the, the timing would be off by one tooth or two. I don't know if one tooth would make it not start, but maybe two teeth. But the timing belt is on and it's not broken. It looks like it's in okay uh, condition. So the only other way we could find out if the, it, the interior connecting rod is busted is what could I use to, you know, let's take the spark plug off again. That's decent, look. So if I spin this connecting rod, look, the piston should go up and down. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's not moving. I mean, I sort of feel like it's moving, but it's not. Not moving. See, it's not moving. Connecting rods busted. Has to be. So I'm gonna unbolt everything, take the engine off. We'll use a boroscope into the dipstick just so we can see. That will drain the oil. I just wanna see. 12 millimeter bolts. There 
is the pump. Spread an oil. I've got a Subway Hero sandwich container here. <laughs> Try not to make a mess, but I usually do. Got this for a review while back. I like this one because this has a short wire, short cord. So I think I'm gonna keep this one. I'm selling the other ones that I have. If you guys are interested, uh, check out my reviews or leave it in the comment section. I have the Teslong one. They all have a 25 or 50 foot of cord. It's like for plumbing, you know, you could stick it all the way through your pipes, whatever you can see. But for my instances, I don't really need a lot of uh, long distance cordage. So this, this, this short thing is just fine. It's like, what is going on here? I gotta take this off. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You guys see that? Well, I need to shave. Try to just get to the area and then show you guys. Oh, carnage! Ooh, look at that. I see that. The sidewalls, there is the um, silicone that's holding the tube together. The two pieces together. There's a balancer. Uh huh. You guys see that? No. There's the crank journal right there, bear. There's a crank journal right there with no connecting rod attached to it. Oops. Right there. You guys see that? I wish you guys could see that. Crank journal is bare, which means the connecting rod is busted. Look at that, look at that view. Mm. I wish you guys could see it. The glare is really bad. Let me, let me position this to the place and I'll show you. Okay, you see it now? I have it positioned. There it says 190 on the crank. There's the crank journal. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. See that? That's the crank journal right there. It's gone. I mean, it, you know, there's no connecting rod attached to it. It's just a very bad condition, worn uh, connecting rod journal. The bearing. It's a gear. I don't think I could turn it anymore without it hitting something. And that's it. But this thing is unbelievable. You can clearly see it says 190 on the crank. This is your journal. And so you don't see a connecting rod attached to that at all. No end bolts or anything like that. It's all in pieces on the bottom. So this uh, GCV 190 pressure washer engine has a blown connecting rod, which is why we have no compression. Other than that, I guess you could use it all for parts. Uh, Gavin Cooper, if you're watching this, email me or text me or whatever you got to do uh, to send this engine to you. But 
I mean, I you, you have to know that sending this thing, the shipping itself, it's going to be $50 at least, you know? So look, look to spend about, if you want it, it's like $100 at least, you know? I'll, uh, I'll measure for you and weigh it and all that, but I don't even know if it's worth it for you, bro. But if you want it, I have it. Otherwise, I'll strip this down for parts and keep it for something else. Looking for a flywheel for a GCV 160. And if you guys have it, contribute to the channel. Send it to me. So what did we get accomplished today? <laughs> I wanted to find out what was wrong with each of these and I guess we did, right? We confirmed that this uh, GCV 190 indeed has a blown connecting rod using the uh, boroscope endoscope that we had. That's very useful. That's really the first time I used it. Well, I, I'd used it for the scooter as well as the snowmobile. It's very useful. I mean, I didn't have to take apart the whole thing to find out what was wrong with it. All we had to do was stick it into the dipstick. Dipstick? Peters, you know what you are. You're a dipstick, a 14 carat dipstick. And uh, we found out that the connecting rod was indeed broken off of the crankshaft, as we saw the crankshaft journal completely bare without a connecting rod. So that's what's wrong with this engine, blown connecting rod. Uh, for Gavin Cooper, who wants this engine, I took the magneto off, and that's it. It's missing the magneto and has a blown connecting rod. So if you still want this engine, let me know. Uh, for this one, we need a flywheel. I think it'll run. In addition, I've got a package here from one of my subscribers, Sanford Rouse from Burgall, North Carolina. As you guys know, I asked my subscribers to contribute to the channel if you had this cover for my V-twin engine on the uh, lawn tractor I just built. Uh, I actually got two. <laughs> Another subscriber sent it to me also, and uh, I'll be using this for my other V-twin engine that doesn't have a cover. So I appreciate both of you guys for sending it. I appreciate all the subscribers buying my stickers, contributing to the channel uh, via paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. If you could spare a buck or two, every little dollar helps the channel continue on projects and parts. And uh, thank you very much, Sanford, for Sanford Mowers in North Carolina for uh, sending me the cover. It's very helpful and it does, uh, saves me the expense of going to buy it if you guys have it just lying around your backyard whatever not using it contributing to the channel you give it you get a shout out from me and uh memorialize your contribution forever on youtube <laughs> thanks a lot but uh okay so uh we're gonna need a flywheel for that 160 gcv and this one maybe go in for parts to another subscriber if not i'll keep it uh, until we run into another project Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, dual Honda engine teardown troubleshooting video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.